Welcome back to the EGFC Power Series 2022. It's finals day. We have quarterfinals, semifinals, and grand finals with two quarterfinals matchup here on this stream. I'm Time to Light. That right there is the one and only Zohan. And Zohan, just tell us what we got in store for people. Yeah, Dan. So right now we're going to have our number one seed, the University or DePaul University, excuse me, uh, against the eighth seed, University of Idaho, starting on Ascent. I'm pretty excited for Ascent because out of our maps today, Bind and we also have Bind and Fracture. I think Ascent really, really changes how we can see how this map goes depending on the team compositions. You know, I think Bind and Fracture, I think there's some must picks on those maps, you know, comparatively. And I think with Ascent, you kind of only require a chamber. So it's going to be really fun to see. I like with Ascent where Sova is a massive part, and I've seen Fade played a few times. Now, not as much as you'd expect, but with Fade being on the board, you'd love to see something different brought by some of these teams, because bringing something different catches your opponents off guard. DePaul are coming into this one as the favorites. There's no beating around the bush on that one. They should win this match. They actually have beaten Idaho prior in the prelim events, but those are previous games and we've had some notions that Idaho may have brought in some new players hoping to see a little bit more of a competitive game than we've seen before because DePaul in those matchups it wasn't close yeah no definitely I mean we we talked about the soft stream but maybe they're gonna try something a bit crazy maybe you know we've been seeing triple initiator be a thing in other regions obviously not as common in North America at the moment but I mean, flashes are great for takes The you know, the sites are not that big and there's a lot of places where a single flash can effectively cover half the site. And so, you know, I obviously think Sova and KO are pretty, pretty much the general pick uh, if you have any initiator composition, but you know, it really depends. And right now we do have Fade coming out and a Phoenix. We're seeing a Phoenix for DePaul and I'm, I'm already, I'm already so lost. Why Phoenix? <laughs> Take everything because I Phoenix. just said and throw it out the window. I think I, I think do. the reason we're seeing yeah. Phoenix is because Phoenix. That's Phoenix. that's why. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're seeing a Phoenix. I I liked how we had a we had a Sova KO for just a second. Uh, excuse me, that that is for Idaho picking the Phoenix. DePaul had that Sova KO for a second, but then they change it away. Chamber's the only one locked, which makes the most sense to me. I think Chamber is. This is probably Chamber's best map, in my opinion, besides, you know, maybe Fracture if you play them well. And Aster is going to be their smoke, which, you know, I, I think if you're if you're good with Aster and if you're if you have good team coordination, great. And then Euro is going to be their, their duelist pick. So I think they're, they're having a bit of fun with that. I like the overall composition we're seeing from Idaho, though. It's different. And that's the main thing I like about it. I was talking about the Fade. Fade is different. Fade is lovely to see. The haunts are always catching teams off guard. Unless you shoot it immediately, you're going to be detected for a longer period of time. Now, the double controller and double duelist, I don't know how I feel about that one. The Rays, I understand. The Phoenix hasn't been played in competitive play this calendar year, and understandably so. However, I want to talk about the Viper. An unconventional pick. It's something mm. different, especially here on Ascent. I like it. I really like that Viper choice. However, I don't know how it's going to play out. There's no real designated places you could put a Viper wall. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I like that it's different. I don't know how well it's going to work. Though. I just also want to comment that. But right when they locked in at the last moment, we have a triple initiator composition by DePaul. So I, I'm not going to say I called it. Uh, but you can say that I, I guess it pretty well. Uh, I have to. So the one thing I will say with Viper is I agree with you. There's no confirmed set place for a Viper wall. And so it's really hard to deal with. Like A, arguably A is probably the best because you can cut off heaven and you can cut off tree. But once you kind of start going towards B, you have to aim it perfectly or else you start cutting off your own team's vision from entering the site. And so really, I, I, I think I would have preferred maybe to see Brim and Omen instead of instead of this Brim Viper composition. But hopefully this works out well for them. And especially this take is going to be the, the most important way of seeing it. Oh my 
with this one. Fragment as well. Well timed on the backline. Sego throwing that one in. Control is taken here by Idaho quickly, but it's really only a main, which they get for default. Actually, not anymore. Ghosty, good shock dart to finish off. Albac, who dies by a combination of utility, the shock dart, and that fragment. Oh my goodness, Joe's been caught off guard. Even with the shorty close range, it's Dinosaur trying to find a third. How is he still alive? What is going on? He's still alive and will stay alive. I refuse to believe that was a flawless round. Zohan, it has been round one. I am shocked already. No, I mean, that that worked out incredibly well because what we mentioned earlier is that, a, you know, to use Astra, uh, especially well on this map, you have to have that team coordination. And that was an incredible call, calling out, hey, there's three coming to, you know, attackers spawn. And so in order to stay alive, Jelly had to immediately save Dinosaur by, you know, throwing the stun there, by throwing the, the pull in. And that's what saved them, allowed that reload and allowed for that flawless win to happen. And that's, and now we're gonna see Viper kind of flanking, which is I'm a bit worried about, especially by the fact that three people are there. Not a relatively good decision, if I do say so myself, sending your Viper alone to roam around the map. Doesn't work out very well, but A seems to be the call here for the University of Idaho. Haunt thrown through, it finds absolutely nothing, and Jelly throws in the gravity well, trying to gain control back as these sky smokes are put through. The shorty though, close range, it finds absolutely nothing, nor does the Bucky. It collapses again for the University of Idaho. Jelly finds their third. A formality is the rest of this round. Xander, however, finds a style pick, nothing more. DePaul lose one player in the first two rounds of play here on Ascent. Yeah, no, an incredible round. And I'm going to be curious to see how Jelly uh, how Jelly buys here, because uh, we have seen, I, I think at the highest levels, we should really see just the Sheriff. We should make sure to you keep your economy the same with the rest of the team. It, you know, it, it, it can work out well, and especially I think if you only lose one player, it doesn't necessarily matter too much how it goes. And OK, I'm liking I need to see where this wall is set up. And OK, I like this wall way better than their first wall out. First wall really cut them off from entering site, and this allows them to cut off tree and to cut off heaven. So if they initiate well, they could get this, and that was a great, great paint shells to start it out. Kelly waiting close range. The ball drops, as does Joe. Now playing around the far side is dropped by Kelvinator and does find a kill back the other way. Xander comes out of that run it back form and is knifed in the back. It's a one versus four. Two players through three rounds have died on the DePaul University side. Make that three, as Sego is shock darted by their teammate. Okay. I, I mean, I, I you know, it, it just a, uh, it, it was it was a setup. It just didn't work out too well. And at the end of the day, they were just they were just waiting there. Yeah, operator coming out from the side of Idaho on Kelvinator, which I'm a maybe a bit concerned by i don't really see any any of these players uh at least in the roles that they're in using that operator and especially you know depaul pushes out but i think now they're under they're seeing the economy and now they're holding back they're waiting for people to push it, it, they've read this perfectly i mean look our i don't want to be pushing now immediately as i say that uh, as you know idaho's defaulting and it's not working out for them What's the call here for Idaho? They seem to be playing much more passive. They understand the fact that DePaul University have gotten very aggressive in all three of these opening rounds, and it's paid out for them in all three of these opening rounds. Kelvin, you're trying to find this opening pick, and does. Dinosaur will fall, and understandably so. I'm surprised they stayed alive through those first two shots, but the third one will end up being their demise. You know, Zohan, they always say third time's the charm. Figure that's why. Well, that and, and the fact that uh, Dinosaur only was using the Headhunter. They didn't have anything else during that engagement. So the fact that it did take three times is probably better, I think, than Dinosaur should have expected. Uh, but it does allow them to at least take a, a little bit of mid control. And it also allows them to rotate towards that B site. But they keep... They're almost left. over rotating. You know, we have 25 seconds left on this clock and really they haven't had any semblance of a movement, but now they're rotating towards A. Should be working out well. There's an opener. That's the most important one. Jelly trying to wait towards the back of the site, though. 
playing time. Four seconds are required to plant that spike safely with time still on the clock. And Nisei getting that kill around the side. Do they deny that spike plant? The answer is no. It will still go down. But so will Ayato Zhao. Jelly playing inside of the smoke will be taken out. Good aggression by Joe. Who is going to in that incendiary straight up into the air. That's a late incendiary. And Xander with a late flank tries to have this come through. Timing's going to go his way. But the door being closed, that'll end his life. This round's over regardless of that incendiary being thrown through. A good four rounds in a row by DePaul University. And a stylistic haunt just to make sure they know it. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and that was... Honestly, that came down to the fact that I think they over uh, they were a little overzealous with defaulting and then they rotated towards B and then just kind of decided to stay there. They they didn't really they they didn't were like, OK, now we're going to we'll go towards A. But like, you know, they split pushed a little bit, especially, you know, I saw Viper running, you know, job back running towards heaven by themselves, didn't get a trade off. And I think that's kind of been the biggest factor with Idaho this game is they're not trading their picks. You know, they lose one, maybe they get one back, but then they lose a second and then they don't get that trade. And so then it's 4v3 and DePaul just has the aim of where you can't really, you know, you can't lose uh, an uneven trade. You have to get a favorable trade, especially on attack, especially if you're going to be beating the number one seed here. And now they're just playing aggressively and it's already working. That shock target kill him. Does it land? No, the headshots do though. Kelvin in her drop. So does Xander. Zhao is down. Joe soon to follow. It's four frags, all four of them headshots. Jelly steals away the ace opportunity, but regardless, DePaul University put five in a row on the board. And Idaho, even though they're named the Vandal Esports, not really having Vandals in their hands very often. Sorry, that, that pun got me. You, you, you got me there, one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm looking at this now. I like the nightmare that they have coming up, Idaho's. Uh, I like the fade picks. I do actually really like fade on on this map because if your ultimate really covers a lot of the site and, and allows you to really check, you know, where to go. Nice one way though, and they walk right into it. And now they wait. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. We see an early pick, but they didn't trade it. They're just waiting at mid. They're waiting for them to be aggressive. But DePaul's playing it perfectly. You know, they play aggressively that first round. Then the second, they just stand there and wait for University of Idaho to do something with it. And just Idaho is falling into their hands at the moment. And then, and then of course, the aim of four, you know, you know, four DePaul is just too good. Even though they drop that Phantom, there's not really a way to grab it. Unfortunately, Kelvin is trying to get aggressive. Jumps to their death. There's no really reason to take that jump. I'm not going to lie to you. The Shock Dart's going to drop Xander to 60 HP. But the Shorty for the side. Oh, no. Zhao does find a kill. But regardless, it's the round over. Dinosaur with the judge from behind becomes the jury and indeed the executioner. Dropping both players there for the University of Idaho. And DePaul with six unanswered. This isn't looking good here. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I'm no, I'm no expert, but oh, Judge Jerry and indeed the executioner. I, I might need to, I might need to take that one for my my comp games. But yeah, no, I mean it's it comes down to the fact that like I mean look at this. DePaul hasn't even had to use their ultimates. Like I think Nisei doesn't have their ultimate because they literally just haven't been able to get in a position where they can get a pick. And now I think Idaho are at least understanding oh where to. <laughs> you see that? I just realized. I just realized. <laughs> I just saw. I just saw. And no way. Oh, and he no. gets a kill anyway. What is that? Oh what? no. This is. The three operators on attack are just. If this was on defense, I would have loved that. But, you know, they're going. They have to engage with those operators. And it's just. It's a rough thing to do. I mean, I loved it for content. I don't know if that's a strategically sound decision, though, unfortunately. Albeck now with 84 health, a total of 101 if you count their shields. But not a position that Idaho would be in. They have four ultimates as well. Three of them are viable in this round, considering the three on the board. I'd like for them to use that Nightfall, but let's say go Falling. That's that Null Command off the board. Trades are going back and forth, and Idaho have... Idaho have brought it back to even. 
But here comes Dinosaur, and they have no idea. Here comes a melee. Are they going to try it? Yes, they are. Is it going to land? You better believe it. Looking for a follow-up. Why not, Dinosaur? DePaul with seven. Dinosaur with a double. An undeserved one at that. A nice final shot, but what is that melee? Can I just get an F in chat for whoever's watching this for Idaho's attack? Because that hurts so much. Definitely a little painful, and I mean, they're not even having to use their ultimates. I, I mean, there's still incredible ultimates available for retakes if they really need to. Here we go. And with, I mean, Idaho's though, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the site, the fact that they have both of their controller ultimates. They could use, really use those if they take sight, and especially if these could be cleared, then no this way. can go well, no well for way. them. Oh no. So it doesn't. Um. We're just going to move past that. That engagement didn't happen. A good swing from Ghosty. I don't know how the heck they 180'd and dropped two players. But you do you, I suppose. Albeck trying to get aggressive, but they do not have the spike. That is sitting in the garage, and that is known by DePaul. All four of the players remaining for DePaul, now three, possibly two as well, have their ultimates. I can't even make a point without them dying. But it's brought back. It isn't brought back. Jelly doesn't find that kill. How does Zhao stay alive there? They, uh... I don't I don't know what to tell you there. That was it was an interesting round. But I mean that that really came into the you know, came into the fact I think you know, they were there was a great engagement on beat by Ghosty. And then I think they over rotated a little bit. You know, they went towards mid, it allowed Idaho to get that early pickoff, and actually that's their first on the board. Which I mean in the grand scheme of things, obviously I think DePaul wants to have a better better defensive half because they are the higher ranked team and I think as as long as they get you know a little more I think they're fine but this tour de force is just doing incredible work already Angel's actually missed so not a lot of game ground gained by that but it's still Idaho in the back foot and the nightfall is going to be thrown in that'll go over towards main but not find anybody on that side the hunt is thrown through but it doesn't land as it needs to apparently it doesn't need to at all it's Zhao again in a 1v4 1vxs seem to be a very consistent trend here for idaho something they cannot afford they just meleeed the roomba now they're looking for this melee kill sego will take that possibility away and depaul university will now find eight on their defensive side yeah no i mean uh, at this point i i really want to see idaho try to be an aggress aggressive towards the site get an early pickoff and then use that viper's pit i think that's a really a crucial way to victory for them right now and they do have in they have the i think the best ultimate for that which is of course that run it back if they use that early if they go towards it you know then you're gonna know that site's cleared you can just take site early and now they have lineups ready so hey they're gonna take b they're gonna have that viper's pit uh, and yeah, about the fact that that landed on the roof. Are, are we just, <laughs> just move past I, that? I, I'm. It's a lineup. It's a lineup, Dan. Uh, so for me, that worked well. That's gonna hide the Sova Dart. That they're they mind gamed it. They, they, it's gonna be great. But now we're gonna see DePaul's oh, first no. retake. So how did Xander get hit by that first? What? The Hunter's Fury somehow lands on Xander the first time. The second time, I completely understand. But now it's into a three versus five slash four and a half with Sega being dropped somehow through that Viper's Pit. Albeck needs to get back into it though, or they may have it drop right in front of him. Dinosaur will take that kill. It's down to a two versus three. Jow around the side, they clear the close corner, but it's down to just Joe who falls. The closest Idaho has gotten since their only round win and they fall. DePaul secure a ninth now on their defense and Idaho, I, I think this goes without saying, their, their money's really not there. Yeah, at this point, especially because they're they're forcing Bucky's a lot. They're really, they're not. They haven't been, you know, sheriffing. I think when they they should be, but you know it, that at the same time, that sometimes works for teams. Uh, you know, playing playing that unorthodox style can work out for them. They have a, a semi decent buy. I mean, we're seeing heavy shields and a couple a couple Bucky's, which I mean, on an entry could work out well. But that was a great retake. Uh, and that also shows to be very careful with your, you know, with, with your smokes as uh, as Viper, since you can't lose them in, in the roof. Oh! Joke's over. 
As that swing from Joe is fully flashed, yet finds two right back popped by Xander. It will immediately fall because of it. Kelvinator dies as well. Not a great position, and Xander dies for the second time in the round. Spike Ghosty planted. looking strong on this side, swinging around his jelly, but not finding the frag. Joe has vacated themselves toward the hell position, which should be cleared. It is. The shot's missed, though. Jelly, the no scope lands down to a two versus one. As all back will fall, the showstopper being thrown through. It will find the first kill. It's down to Jelly with that operator out. Not a gun you want to have in a one versus one, but the cosmic divide is a Available should they choose to use it. The showstopper just being used by Zhao means they do not have it in hand. Jelly taps it just a single time, but the timing not going their way. There's the swing. Zhao finds the kill. Idaho find their second, looking to threaten the 9-3 half, and dare I say, the 9-3 curse. We did call it earlier. We did talk about maybe, maybe if they get to 9-3, uh, and you know, they, there could be a chance. Uh, I mean, they have that post plan available especially if their viper knows lineups they could actually they could definitely effectively take sight run back and then just Thank stall you. it out for honestly the entire time as, as long as they they burn about 10 seconds they have enough utility they have that, the ultimates ready but dinosaurs just getting off early and that's uh, everyone down spike down b I dare I say not a great start for them. Xander actually does bring one back, and it is the Odin's. This is certainly possible. A swing into the second, fully flashed, not finding the third, at least not just yet. The flash dissipates his life will as well. DePaul with double digits in the first half of their own map pick, Switching hitting sides. on towards that historically advantageous attacking side. Again, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not a fan of Idaho's chances. I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a little brutal, but I mean, there there could be a chance. I do. Uh, the one thing I'm a bit worried about is they don't have a sentinel. They don't have anything uh, in order to, you know, to really shut down a site. I would actually I, I think Idaho would have done very well. I think if they switched to raise or Phoenix for Killjoy, because uh, that could have allowed them to, you know, to to really shut down A to really shut down B. But I like the double controller that. You know, that's so many smokes, that's so many things that, you know, DePaul has to oh, burn utility through. It could not work out well for them. Oh, the decay is there, and the swing is as well. Shorty's on both sides, but notably landing here for the attack. DePaul making it a two versus two as the trades were there. The fragment dropped to allow the retreat should they choose to do it. But it's two duelists versus two initiators. The initiators have the flashes, the duelists have that dueling ability. Unfortunately, Xander just too far away with that shorty and the wall in the way. It gives away the position of that raise, who looks like they want to back away. Zhao looking to get aggressive, though, and the timing should go the way of the Soviet. It does indeed. They make it up the catwalk and look to vacate towards that A-side. Zohan, we're looking at a spike plant and a post plant for Zhao. Yeah, post plant for, for Zhao, and especially no paint shells, that, that does make it a bit harder. Uh, you know, they have that blast pack for entry, uh, so if, if the pole, you know, maybe doesn't expect where they're coming from, maybe misses a shot, that could be that could go well. Uh, I mean, that can kind of confirms that you know they're, they're where they are. So now they're going to be waiting for it, and they go right into it. So sadly, that's not going to be working out for them, uh, and, and it is going to be to Paul's eleventh round. I mean, at this point, Dan, I'm just. <laughs> They really have to make sure that this, not this round, but the round after this uh, goes really well for them uh, because that that's going to be their first gun run. I, they might force here. I don't want them to because I want them to have guns. Uh, and if they don't, if they force here and they lose, I'm going to get really worried. I mean, I'm already worried. Albeck trying the one way setup. You have to jump before throwing. Almost got it. It has to land on the far side. Feels bad, man. It's 11-2. Again, no way to sugarcoat it. This is not looking good. There are four players stacking this B side, though. So that's a decent notion. However, that recon finds two a good tether, and Jelly finds the kill across. It is brought back, but only by one. The Prowler thrown through finds absolutely nothing, but neither will Xander. It's down to just Joe on the site proper, trying to play towards the catwalk, and dies straight through the smoke. Zhao and yet another 1v4 with a classic in hand and two blast packs to use. They won't even get the chance to use them. It is a map point already for DePaul University. For context, by the way, we didn't even start the stream until 4.15. It is 4.40. And it's, it's map point.
Dan, you're in the future. You're uh... a... <laughs> Time zones. I had to, <laughs> time you zones. made a time zone joke earlier, so I'm gonna make another time zone joke. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, this is this is why I was a bit worried about the those four spies because now, I mean, look at this. They have, I mean, they have a vandal. I'm curious what the rest of the team has, uh, and they're just gonna take B again. So there could be a chance if they get those early picks, they could do this. But they have to, they have to get them now. Oh my goodness, what a flash. All back wasn't flashed though. And from the far side finds the kill. They're looking to throw the Prowler in. It does go through. The Odin, however, not landing could cost them. It's so narrowly missing as well. Good Molotov in towards the back, but that does very little, if anything, whatsoever. The Prowler whiffs as well. It's a whole lot of utility, finding a whole lot of nothing thus far, Zohan, but they're still looking to get aggressive here on the attacking side. All back looking to peek up and over. Do they see it towards Logs? No, they don't! All back dies because of it. Nisei gets the kill through. They could go A and have a free sight should they choose to do so right now, but timing could go against them as the sky smokes fall. So Five does both Xander and Nisei say still this wreath of three versus three nobody's taking this massive man advantage yeah i mean joe gets that early pickoff but something i want to comment on earlier is we saw joe smoke the, the way joe smoked actually i think helped the a little bit allowed them to get into a position where i think they were able to even it out and now look at this idaho's both one hit effectively they they were able to clear it out but that was that was definitely a little riskier than i wanted it to be but now, you know, now they're going to have Vandals. Now they can actually, they can really try to win it here. Uh, and so I'm going to be curious to see how DePaul really takes it. Maybe they just, maybe they just go towards A, which is looking like they're going to be doing. And they have the weapons to do it. And they can definitely win it here. Uh, depending, you know, obviously we have to wait for that nightfall. We have to see where these smokes from Idaho are going to be coming. And I definitely these early frags from Zhao are going to be the crucial key to victory here. Zhao scanned out early. That's a lot of information given over. And no, they're suppressed. Does that paint shell go out? It does just in time. If that doesn't, I think the site falls and maybe the round as well. Good shock dart in towards the back, but it doesn't land considering the reposition. The knight fall to return and try to reinitiate here for the defensive side, but it's gonna find absolutely nothing. Ghosty with a double dinosaur with that shotgun in hand will find everything. It's down to just all back on a flank. They have been heard. The information's there. So is the headshot. Map one convincingly in the favor of DePaul University as Idaho fall 13-3. Zohan, I can't I can't say I didn't expect it, but I didn't expect it to be that bad. Wouldn't, I wouldn't call it bad. I, I would just say that that was definitely the definitely shows, I think, the strength of DePaul University. I really liked their composition. Uh, I mean, I have been hyping up this triple initiator comp for about as long as I've heard about it. I saw it and I was just like, this is this is the way to play Ascent. I want to see this happen. Uh, especially as a chamber main because then my role is for sure and then the rest you know everyone else can just play initiator and, and have fun with it but and i i think that really showed though that depaul depaul has set practices they know how to play those roles and they know how to utilize those roles and i think idaho maybe was a bit a bit confused with with their college uh in that i i don't mean that in any negative way i just mean that and you know you i they like smoked in such a way that it seemed more of a an offensive smoke like that's how i think brim would, should smoke if you were trying to enter b and that actually allowed depaul to enter and so you know just maybe maybe using only one smoke and and th you know you like cycling through those smokes would work a lot better for them but now we're going to be going to bind which i like brim viper on bind <laughs> so i'm actually kind of excited to see that Hopefully that call works a little bit better in favor of Idaho. I think communication and coordination just a little bit on that Idaho side could be improved along with winning gunfights. I think that's a relatively yeah. uniform way of winning games. You know, first person shooters existing and all. You get the general idea. But bind a much more heavy utility map and ability leveled map. You need to see that coordination change from Idaho from Ascent in towards now Bind it is, as it is their map pick as well. They had the choice and they chose Bind. We'll see if it plays out for them after the break.
Welcome back to the EGFC Power Series 2022 season finals. I have some good news and some bad news for you. Good news for all of you DePaul University fans. They've just won 2-0. Some bad news for all you Idaho fans. Unfortunately, they FF'd. Unfortunately, they came into this thinking it was a best of one, so scheduling issues forced them to not be able to play map number two. So DePaul, after a 13-3 win on just a single map, move on to those semifinals. They will play... Marquette University at 8 p.m. on this stream. So if you like either of those teams or just love to see Amazing Valorant and want to see Migs miss a massive amount of shots, come back for that. I'm mainly just messing with you, Migs. I love you. But we still have one more game to go. That's not until 6 p.m. Eastern. So we're going to take a little bit of a longer break. When we come back, it is our second and final quarterfinal on the day. We'll see you then.